Hello everyone, it's Michelle, and on this Ark Survival of All video, I'm going to be showing you how to tame the Tech Strider, or the Bionic Giraffe. So let's go ahead and get started. The Tech Striders eat something very specific at first in order for you to tame it, and that is something called Mutagel. And you can only find Mutagel in the actual space biome. But here's the thing, the space does have rotations. I already created a video on a resource rotation guide so that you know when to find Mutagel and when to find all of the resources that are available in space. But basically guys, you need to be looking for supply drops. When you see an orange supply drop in the sky, you know that this orange supply drop means that the space rotation will be black pearls and mutagel. But here's the thing, the orange drops don't yield that much mutagel. The drop that you're really looking for out in the open are the white drops because that means that you need to run to the space biome. Remember, the orbital drops, the supply drops, means what kind of materials are going to be in the space biome at a given time and the white drops happens to mean that you're going to get a lot of ambergris and a little bit more mutagel. But the white drops give you a little bit more mutagel than the orange drops do. So when you see these drops, go immediately to the space biome and harvest up as much as humanly possible. And when you are in the space biome during a white drop, you will see these brown little rocks that look like this. And I'm just using a mining drill to harvest these. And you can see that I pick up an absolute ton of ambergris and just a little bit of mutagel. That ambergris though weighs a heck of a lot, so just dump it immediately unless you really want to hang on to it. But you can see that I'm getting a little bit of mutagel here. When you do get a rotation like this, just spend as much time down here as possible and harvest as much that you possibly can so that way you have enough to tame as many tech striders that you could possibly uh, want to have. So just go ahead and dump the ambergris and there you go. You can see I'm stockpiling up my mutagel. It really doesn't take that much time to get some, but again, it's just going to be dumping the ambergris as you get it along the way. And when you do read the description on the on the mutagel, it does say that it, you use it to tame striders. The strider mutagel requirements scale by its level, so you're going to need more mutagel depending on what level the strider is. Once you have found a wild tech strider that you want to tame and you have your mutagel, you might think it's time to go ahead and tame it. Well, if you walk up to a wild tech strider and you go up to it, you'll notice where it says missions. Yeah. Also, it does tell you how much required mutagel you need to hack it. By hacking it, it means taming. That wild level 20 only needed 5 mutagel. It said 44 slash 5 because I have 44 mutagel and it needed 5. But that one needed 7 missions to complete. It was a level 20. This one here is a level... What is this? Level 100. So let's see how much mutagel it needs. Let's see how much... So it needs 21 mutagel and it needs 33 missions. So we have to actually go complete missions in Arc Gen 2 in order for us to tame the Tech Strider. That's a lot of missions too, by the way. And just like in Arc Genesis 1, you have missions. However, these missions are going to be a requirement in order for you to tame a Tech Strider. I'm just scrolling through all the different missions. You guys can look through and see which ones that you want to do. This is not a guide on what are the easiest missions. You need to figure out what missions that you want to do and how you want to do them. But each mission counts as one. It doesn't matter if it's Gamma, Beta, or Alpha. If you complete Bulb Dog Fetch on Gamma, that's one mission done. But if you complete complete Bulb Dog Fetch on, on Beta, that means you have two missions done. And if you complete Bulb Dog Fetch on, on Alpha Mode, that means you have three missions done. Now your Striders, depending on what level they are, you need to have more missions completed. And that's where it's going to get really challenging. If you see a level 150 Strider, you might have to do an absolute ton of missions, over 40 missions to tame that Tech Strider. So keep that in mind. So you guys need to complete some missions. For me, I'm going to be doing some of the easier ones. I'm going to be doing the race ones because those are absolutely easy to do, in my opinion. And if I want to tame a Strider, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And to be fair, I'm probably going after a low-level Strider to start off with because, well, you need to have a lot of missions done to get that higher level one. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to complete a couple of missions that are incredibly easy for me. Um, and so when you're do done with the mission, that? you'll have the same prompt that you had in Arc Genesis 1 mission complete you'll get rewards you'll get hexagons all that stuff but really we're just looking for mission complete mission. you did it contact re-established with our advanced perks 
When you found your texture rider, it's time to go ahead and tame it. Make sure that you put your mutagel on your last hotbar on the zero slot because that's how you're going to be feeding the, the texture rider at first. It only takes one feeding. Talk about a weird tame though. This is Ark's most weirdest tame I have ever seen before. And for those of you who are taming yours for the first time, it is going to look absolutely bizarre. And don't worry, don't freak out. It took me a while to figure out everything that was going on my screen, but I'm going to try to slow things down so that I could show you how to do it and how not to do it. This is my very first first attempt at taming, it, taming a text writer. So there are some things that I screwed up on, but I thought it would be really cool to point out some of the things to do and not to do. But one of the first things that I do recommend that you absolutely do first is jump on its back. Get up on its back and have your mutagel on your last hot bar. You're gonna get the prompt to E to use mutagel and when you click E to use mutagel, you're gonna see something here. Target the bottom of the neck to begin hacking. Yes, out of any other creature, you feed it like a passive tame, but then you have to go to a specific part on its body. And depending on where it tells you to go, it could tell you to go to the neck, it could tell you to go to one of the legs, it'll bring you to whatever part of the body and you have to go up to it and press E again on that specific location and you're going to start hacking. But hold up, stop. Let's talk about that blue text really quick above where it says Wild Text Rider, where it says Grace Period 0 0.12, Affinity to Gain 63%. What does that mean? Well, here's the thing. If you are successful, 100% successful with your, your hacking ability, then that means that you will gain 63% on your taming. So if your text writer is not tamed at all and it's at 0% on taming and you are successful 100% with your hacking, you will get 63% tamed. Done. Now, if your text writer is already 10% tamed, and if it says affinity to gain 63% and you are successful with your hacking, that means if you do the math, that's 73% tamed. Now, the higher the level of the tech strider, the lower the affinity percentage will be naturally because it is a higher level dino and higher level dinos take a lot longer to tame. And this is what hacking looks like. You're going to be prompted with this little mini game. You're going to see these green boxes that go past this green line and you have to click left mouse button until those green boxes line up with that green line. But I don't know if you guys noticed, I accidentally punched my little text writer there while I was doing the, the, the mini game. And the thing is, is when you do punch the text writer, it is going to aggro onto you. It's going to make it angry and then it's going to just cause your taming effectiveness, your taming affinity to go down as well too. But the other thing I want to point out is as I was running off, you guys see this red ring around me. That red ring is surrounded around me and while you are hacking, you have to have the text writer within that circle in order for the, t the hacking to be successful. That's another thing. So first off, don't hit your text writer um, and secondly, make sure that you are within a very close range of the text rider while you're taming it. It will not aggro onto you as you're hacking it. You just need to make sure that it is within that ring as you are trying to hack it. Whether or not you are successful with your hacking attempt, go back to your strider and jump onto its back. And you're gonna notice a new gray text. And this says, must wonder a bit before another hacking attempt can be made. And you're gonna see a number that corresponds with this as well too. It's gonna go up or down. I'm going to call this number units and that number corresponds to where it was originally hacked. So if the number is going up, that means that the text writer is walking towards where it was originally hacked and we need that number to go down. That number must reach zero before you can attempt another hack on the text writer. Just let it wander away, stay on its back until it reaches zero, until you can hack it again. Once you get the hang of it, the text writer is relatively a very simple and easy tame. Now that we know the basics of taming the text writer, let me show you my 100% successful tame. Here I have a level 50 text writer. I'm going to hop on its back. I've done enough missions so that I can tame it and I have the mutagel on my last hotbar. And I'm going to go ahead and hit E and I need to target the chest. So. I need to hop down. You can actually see the sparks coming off of the area where I need to hack it. I press E and then I stay still so that I don't accidentally hit it. And then I have the mini game and I'm going to make sure that I do this correctly. I'm also making sure that I'm staying very close to the text writer so that way it stays within the red ring and right there override successful. 
I'm going to press H on it, and you can see that because I was successful, I've got the taming affinity that it said I would get. It said 42, but it's rounded down to 41.5, which is basically the same thing. I'm going to stay on its back, and I'm going to wait for the next hacking attempt to be made. It's actually pretty close, and if you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, you can actually see one of the legs is sparking. That is how I know where the next spot is going to be for me to hack, because the next location will start sparking for you as well, too. I'm pressing H on it just to show you that the taming is at 41.5, and that's after one successful hack. Again, it's going to depend on the level of the Strider, and it's also going to depend on what you have your server settings on for taming. The taming effectiveness is at 97.3, and there, I'm hacking the leg, and I got the mini game. Match those up. Make sure you don't miss them. And there we go, override successful, and that's my second hacking attempt, and it's at 85.6. And it's got a wonder a bit, so I'm just waiting on its back until it goes down to zero. It's going up higher, it's going lower now. It doesn't take that long for it to wander away from its original location. It's still at 97.3 for taming effectiveness, which is really good. And I'm just waiting for it to wander around. And it's going back up because it keeps wandering towards the same spot where it was hacked before, but that's okay. If you look too, I don't know if you guys saw that, but the neck is actually sparking there. So I know that the last hacking spot, as long as I'm successful here, is going to be at its neck. So that's a really good indication so that you know where to be so that you can prepare for the last or the next hack. Again, this is a low level text writer too. Depending on what level that you have, you might have to do more more hacking attempts. But keep in mind guys, you only use that one initial bit of mutagel. And staying on its back the way I am is one of the best tactics, one of the best ways to do this. And there we go. I'm going to start hacking here. Match that up. Alright, and it was a successful team. Let's go ahead and call this thing Bionic Giraffe. Because that's what it is. It's a giraffe. That's what it looks like. Anyway, let's go ahead and put it on passive. And let's get it to stop following. Now, we gotta talk about what it can do. Because there's a lot of things that this thing can do. But we need to talk about all of the different types of tech striders that you can get. Because guess what? There's more than one. There's definitely different types of tech striders and we're going to talk about them. Now on to the features of the tech striders. So first off, on the left hand side, I have the one that I tamed with you guys. Bionic Giraffe here. I've gone ahead and spawned in some of the other ones because guess what? There are different types of tech striders in terms of their equipment and their capabilities. So I'm going to be showing off each one of their abilities so that you know what types there are. First off, let's go and look at mine as well. This was my level 50 that tamed to level 74. And there's a couple of things that we should point out when talking about this. First off, this is a creature that has a charge capacity, very similar to that of the Bulb Dog from Aberration and all those other charge pets. So... It is up to you how you want to spec into your Strider itself, and it really depends on this right here. The Shield Projector Rig versus the Excavation Rig, but these will be different for each Striders. Depending on what abilities are given to your Strider, based off of what it is, you might want to spec a little bit differently. But for the purposes of this video, for, for purposes of just showing off, I kind of want to have some charge capacity with me right now just so I can show off the abilities. I'm going to spec this into its charge capacity and you will see that it's gradually going to go up. I'll put it at about 1200, that's fine. And um, you know what, we're going to put some movement speed because I hate slow stuff. There we go. All right. If you get on top of the actual tech strider and you look at the back, well, you have a platform that you are standing on, but this thing is absolutely OP because it has a tech pod on the back that is built into it. And yes, you can fast travel using the strider. 
which is absolutely insane. The other important feature about this creature is this right here. It has a transmitter. Yes, you heard me. It has an actual transmitter. You can upload your survivor, um, and that is absolutely incredible. But this thing works off of charge. It works off of its its charge ability. So again, you want to have some charge in your in your team. That's why I've gone ahead and leveled up some charge on that one. The other thing that this thing can do as well too is it can actually charge batteries. So right here, if you look, I have some batteries that I've put in the inventory of the Strider and it is slowly, ever so slowly charging up that battery right there. I've gone ahead and put some batteries in each one and there's a reason why you would want to do this. And that is this guys. They can work off of the batteries themselves. They can consume the charge from the batteries and it will replenish their charge capacity. So if you run out of charge and you happen to have some of the batteries in your Strider's inventory, you can just charge it back up and keep going, which is absolutely incredible. It's a good way to it's a good way to utilize those batteries. So now on to this part right here, the left and the right. I'm not really sure what to call these, so I'll call it the left right here where my mouse is hovering and the right over here where my mouse is hovering. There are four different possibilities that you can get for your striders for the left hand side, and there are four different possibilities that you can get for your right hand side. And when you go find your strider out in the wild, you'll notice that they look very different. And that's normal, they are going to look different. If you look at the faces of each one of the striders, they're different, and that is based on what their attachment is. And if you look at the backs, this one looks like it has a spine, whereas some of the other ones don't really have that. They're a little bit skinnier, or some of them have little flaps on the sides, little doohickeys. So each one of them does different things, and this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to go over what each one of them does very quickly. So... First things first, let's go ahead and let's hop on. Let's start with the other side over here and we'll go over each one of these striders. The one that has the silence rig cannon right here. The things that are on the left hand side, you need to click right mouse button for it to work. This one might not look like it does anything, but if you have a UD that has a roar, a wild UD, or an enemy UD, or even the mammoth ability, you will stop their roar from happening. You will stop their ability from taking place. The shield generator, the thing on the right hand side, you have to press C to activate the stuff that's on the right. And when you do that, you will see that the shield gives, it's literally a shield that covers me all the way around from back to front and from above and it moves with me as I move too. Let's go ahead and put him back and we'll look at the other ones. This strider here that I'm on right now has a radar rig on the left hand side so if we click right mouse button I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna hold down right mouse button first you have an option to change. The radar basically can find yourself wild dinos and humans, but you can filter it to both if you want, or you could filter it to just humans. You could filter it to just only dinos. I'm gonna filter mine to just dinos because I'm on single player and there's nobody else. And when you click it, if you are looking at a target, it will tell you exactly on the left-hand side, hey, I scanned four things in my vicinity from that little pulse that was coming out. And the thing that is highlighted in white is my Bronto, level 16. And it tells you how far away each one of those creatures are in meters. And it tells you their level as well too, which is incredibly helpful. The phase cannon. Um, this thing, I've not leveled this up in, in melee damage, so it's not going to be incredibly powerful here. But keep in mind that if you level up in melee damage, it will be better. But if you click C you shoot a little pulse out, just like that. But look at the bottom left. It is incredibly slow to recharge. Absolutely slow. Not the fastest thing. And right now I can shoot my second one. That is how slow it is. But again, if you level up in melee damage, I'm sure it's more powerful. The next one I want to talk to you about, we've already gone ahead and looked at the shield generator rig, so I don't need to show that, but this one is my favorite strider. And I'm going to come back to this one in just a moment. But this one 
is the excavation rig. And watch this. If you go up to resources and you click right mouse button, you are going to zap resources. I'm just, I only had to click it once and I'm just constantly collecting that resource. If I click right mouse button again, I toggle it off so I don't collect any more resources. But that is absolutely insane. There's nothing to be done. There is nothing else to be done. Each one of these striders too has the left mouse button attack, which is your basic stomp attack. And it's the same exact for each strider. But the excavation by far is my absolute favorite strider just because of that ability to harvest. This next one is actually a pretty good strider as well too, and it involves using a mining drill. First off, we've already talked about the radar rig, so I don't need to show that off, but the resource ex the resource attractor rig is the thing that you really want to focus on, and that is going to involve a mining drill. Um, so what you want to do is have yourself a mining drill, go up to your strider, and you're going to see an option where it says enable resource collection from nearby mining drills. Click that and we've enabled that. And if you look, you're going to have these little pink purple beams flying towards it. It's a range. If you look carefully, there is a range to it. And that is telling you what the range is of it picking off on your mining drills. If you look in my inventory, I'm pretty much empty. I have some element shards on me, some mutagel. Um, and some gas and spoiled meat. That's it. But watch this. If I take that mining drill and as long as I'm in the range of those purple little lights and I harvest. Reset this again. Hold on. There we go. There we go. It's taking it right out of my inventory. So it's, it's constantly removing it. It is constantly removing it. I thought it was saying added, but it's just saying removed. Just like that. Now, if I go out of range over here, and I look at my inventory, there you go. It's going to say that I have that material because I'm not in range of that purple beam. So this is actually a really good, a really good creature, but you have to be in range of it. And the last and final one that I want to talk about is this one right here. On the left hand side you have the pulse cannon rig and then on the right you have the shield projector rig. So if I click right mouse button, which is the pulse, it's little, little tiny beams. But you can shoot them in quick succession so this actually makes it really useful and really helpful. And the beams shoot very far out by the way too. If you click C, you have a directional shield. So if I click just C, it's gonna pull it out and the shield is gonna stay in the line of sight where I clicked it with the strider. But if I hold C down, I can hover my mouse and I can change it so that way it's, it's covering my backside. If I hold C again, I can change it so that I can block stuff coming from the left hand side. So I could basically do a sneak attack on the side like this and then I could change it, move it to the other side, just like that. And that's incredibly helpful as well, too. There is one last feature that I need to talk to you about the Strider that makes it absolutely OP. It's already insane as it is with all the abilities, with the tech transmitter, the sleeping pod, and all that stuff. But we got to talk about one last feature. Before I do, though, I want to mention this to you guys. You will have a durability on... Um, on your on your attachments to your striders and here's the thing it will say that you can repair it but as of right now we have not figured out a way to find out how to repair it um it, it's just not repairable that i found so if you found a way to repair it let me know in the comments below i would love to hear it so basically that means that when this thing breaks it will die and you'll have to go out and tame a new one. But let's talk about the last feature of the Strider, which is Deddy Storage Item Transfer. The last and final thing that I want to show you guys is with the dedicated storage. So over here, I have a Tech Strider that I've obviously spawned in. 
This guy is an excavation rig, but the main thing that I want to point out to you guys is with dedicated storage and its ability to transmit materials to a dedicated storage of your choice. Um, over here is my dedicated storage. I'm going to put some element in here. This thing is holding 53 pieces of element, right? Now, you need to have your text writer close by to your dedicated storage to first initialize this. And what you go and do is go up to the text writer and click Dedi Storage Item Transfer. Click that, and then there's going to be a green option if you're close enough to it where it says Link to Nearby Dedi Storage. Go ahead and do that. And you need to make sure that it's clicked onto the element shards because this is what I'm going to be harvesting. And I'm going to show you an absolutely epic trick with this. However, here's the, here's the unfortunate thing. We have to walk this text writer over to where the resource is. These things are incredibly slow and they can go in a tech transmitter. They cannot be cryopodded, but you can upload them. So you cannot cryopod them. So we got to walk this thing over there. This is where I'm located on the map. Just so you guys can see. And here's my GPS coordinates. I'm just showing you how far away I am. And I'm going to be going to the middle where the bridge gaps between the two different maps to collect some element shards with this, just to show you. If you are lucky enough to get the element shard spawn, then you can go into the space biome just like this with your strider and this is why this thing is absolutely OP. Let's go ahead and land it or get as close to the ground as we can and all I have to do now guys is right mouse button and if you look added and removed it is constantly adding the element shards but it's constantly taking them out too and you can see that I'm just harvesting the element shards absolutely crazy look how much element shards that I'm that I'm harvesting here you also notice that I'm not picking up metal because I've linked the deadly storage to element shards I am picking up stone because I'm getting stoned from those from those crystals there uh, my inventory is picking up the um, the element that you would normally get. But if you look right there, you could see the element shards going into my inventory and then they're leaving. So let's keep walking around. And just by doing this for a few seconds, I'm gonna show you my dedicated storage back over there real quick. And let's see how much element shards we picked up just by taking this text writer out here for a few seconds. And here I am back at my dedicated storage. And this is everything that that text writer has, has harvested. And that few seconds of me just out there harvesting gave me 13, uh, 136 pieces of element, basically, because 100 element shards will equal out to one piece of element. That is absolutely insane to think about. And that, guys, is everything that you need to know about the text writer in terms of taming it and what it can do. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more notifications of when I upload next. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.